What's up, banana head? What's up, lotion? I know. <laughs> we we sat down. And I'm like, I'm like, hello. I have to put lotion on my face. <laughs> I'm like, hello. I woke up this morning and need to put lotion on my face. You said you had to go check on the dryer, so we're just really exciting today. Super exciting. I have not put a shirt on. I am still in my robe. I'm definitely not dressed by any means. I mean, I'm dressed like for the house, but I could, I wouldn't leave my house how I'm dressed right now. Do you have clothes nearby in case you have to run outside for like a fire or an emergency? Yeah. Do you really? Well, like the clothes I wear around the house are like pajama pants and a shirt. So that's like at the end of the bed. I sleep in shorts, but I keep like pajama pants like by the end of the bed. I have a shirt, a sweater, pants, and socks hanging in my coat hanger by my back door. Yeah. So that I can be fully dressed when I run outside. Yeah. <laughs> Even though the one time when my car was on fire, I ran outside in my underwear. <laughs> Jeez. No, I would not. No. I would not run outside in my underwear. Unless, like, I had, I guess, if I had to. If the house was on fire, but not if an outbuilding was on fire, I'd be like, all right, that's going to wait a second until I put some fucking pants on. <laughs> <laughs> oh before we get started can you guys we haven't gotten any in a while so can you guys if you haven't done it yet review us on apple podcasts go say something nice give us five stars it helps our visibility i think i th I don't pretend to fucking understand anything but i think it does good stuff for us so i think it helps us a little bit yeah this month uh first of all we didn't talk about the fact that a few weeks ago we had entered our fourth year of doing what's up weirdo podcast yeah i feel like you say that in a confusing way like we hit our three-year anniversary and yes we are technically that puts us in our fourth year but that somehow that makes it seem like we've been around for four years like the way you say it is weird for me we finished three years we're in our fourth year yeah and i looked today and uh, what's up weirdo podcast now spans to 70 countries are listening to what's up weirdo. that's so crazy <laughs> That's so crazy, especially considering I have no idea where anything is. We're not even half of the countries in the world yet. Well, that's still so many. I know. There's 192 countries in the world, and we, we hit 70 of them. That's nuts. Hello, other countries. Can we stay over your house? Can we move there? <laughs> that is cute. And then we still have our win a date contest with us. Win a hangout with us contest is still up through April 19th. It's technically called win a date with Jessica. I know. I keep not wanting to say it out loud. It's so embarrassing. It's win a date with Jessica and Teddy and Toad, but my name is written bigger. Because it's technically win a date with you. I know. Gross. Anyway, <laughs> the link to enter is under this episode and in, in the bio of our social media pages, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. So you could come here. You The prize is you come here and you hang out with us and we put you up in a hotel and we pay for your travel and we pay for any activities that we do. And yeah, everybody that I've talked to who like names what they would want to do with us is so cute. It's like all of our favorite things. They're like, we want to go to Oak House Deli. We want to go to Gus's. We want to go. I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to do all that too. That's our favorite shit. Yep. Cozy hangs. Whoever wins. I saw some comments from outside of the United States. And the response is, if you get yourself to the United States, <laughs> yeah. we will then fly you to Michigan and yes. put you up in a hotel. Yes, that's the thing. We don't have the resources to fly you from a, one of the 70 countries that listen to <laughs> us. But uh, yeah, but if you get to the US on whatever end you get here from, we'll get you to Michigan as part of the prize if you win. Indeed. You did the Nain Rouge stuff on Sunday. I did. I did the protest of the March de Nain Rouge or Non Rouge, if you want to say it that way. There's multiple ways to say it. No one really cares in the parade of what it is or how it's said because no one really cares except for the tiny intrepid band of people the, who want to support Detroit history. I think this year there were nine of us. I thank everybody that came out in support of our protest of the parade. And this year, people actually asked us some questions, and I think we changed some minds because I had a sign that said Cadillac is a fraud. Mm-hmm. And someone came up to me, actually a couple d different people came up to me and they were like, what's that mean Cadillac's a fraud? Because the story of the Nain Rouge is that Cadillac encountered a red demon and hit him with his cane and then lost his fortune. And so I very, you know, in the moment you have to explain it quickly. So mm -hmm. I said, the story is an allegory. When the French came here, who was here first? And mm -hmm. they were like, there was one guy who's like, the monster? And I'm like, no, no, no. 
not the monster. Who was in Michigan before the French got here? And he goes, the Indians. And I said, right. And now we have a parade where the French march the red devil out of the city. Yeah. And they, one of the guys was like, oh, that's not fucking good. Mm. And I was like, nope, no, it's not. No. So they like made whoever fucking made it up, made up like basically cryptid lore about a little, little guy, a red guy, but it's not really about that. I mean, here's the difficulty, right? So like in France, you have Lutons and you have like, you have little elves and goblins. Mm -hmm. So when the French came here, they probably encountered the original inhabitants of North America. They probably encountered their gods, one of which is like who is a little red rabbit. Yeah. It's very easy to turn that pagan, quote unquote, native, quote unquote, God into a demon. And it also helps that at that time, Native Americans were considered red skinned. Yeah. So they just like made it into like a folktale to suit themselves. Yeah. To make yeah. themselves as they were destroying a culture to make mm -hmm. themselves seem like, of course, the victor always writes the history, right? Yeah. To make themselves seem like they were doing a good thing. So we go down there and we protest the French and we protest the kicking out of the red devil from the city. It would be much cooler if it was just a celebration of Detroit heritage and culture. Yeah. Nobody explains it, right? Nobody cares either. The majority of people down there have no idea what's going on. No. Especially when they have the archetypal red demon of Detroit end the parade by talking about living in the Matrix and then singing a version of I'm Just Ken, except it's I'm Just Nane. That's like the worst. You told me that before, and I'm like, that is the worst. That is so cringy. The cringiest thing I've ever seen. That's so cringy. But anyway, well, you're going to continue to go every year and change like three minds every year. And then eventually when you're 300 years old. I've done this. I can't believe I've done this for 11 years now. I know. That's cute, though. That's nice for you. Yeah, I try and do something nice. My dad came over on that day that you went, and we ate Olive Garden. He brought Olive Garden, and it was delightful. And we watched our travel video from this past summer, and he got to see all the places that I saw and then that we went to together. And then I told him, we were talking on the phone later that night, I'm like, I had Olive Garden. I showed my dad the travel video. And you're like, I've showed my, my dad the travel video, too. <laughs> 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 so i'm like we're so corny but my dad really liked it like he hasn't been that many places and he doesn't he doesn't like being away from home and he doesn't he hasn't been that many places so to see like all those mountains and like the sequoias and all that shit like he really liked it so that was very wholesome so that was my day like while you were off yelling at people <laughs> we don't yell we're very nice all of our signs have hearts and say love and be nice i know your dad is very fun and very cute I know he is. My dad will be coming for me and staying with me to get his surgery starting next weekend. And he may be here up to six weeks. That sucks. So I've started drinking again. Hey, all you guys in all those other 70 countries that have health care and like take care of people when they're sick. Over here in America, you don't get any aftercare. You have to care for your relatives in your house like you're a fucking nurse and do all these medical things like empty bags and fucking drainage and shots and whatever the fuck in your own house like you're a goddamn nurse because america does not give a fuck we do not we do not i will be also in the next week having to purchase a new bed and a new couch yeah because there's nowhere in your house for him to fucking convalesce right now correct my couch is too low and the guest bed i have is also too low for him they need to be higher so i have to buy a new couch and a new bed it's a mess so basically <laughs> Luckily, for the first week, he can go to a, like a nursing center place. Oh, that's what we're hoping. That has never been confirmed. Well, we're fucking leaving. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, my sister will come and help on the days we're gone, but. Yeah, we have a speaking engagement literally fucking five days after his surgery and another secret mission. So we decided we're going to get absolutely bombed the whole fucking weekend because it will be your last weekend of freedom for several weeks. Yes, indeed. And our speaking engagement is three days after his surgery well gotta take care of people it'll get figured out somehow i don't i'm gonna change the subject because it's fucking depressing but <laughs> but it's what people go through oh i know it's not just me if i wouldn't have had like there's just like no i feel like in other countries they pay for like a nurse to come to your house for a week or two and they or whatever or, or it's an option and they just don't fucking have that here but anyway as brought up recently on here i fucking watched vibes 
1988. Jeez. Oh, and it's so good. <laughs> I told you you would like it. Oh my God. You guys, it's Jeff Goldblum and Cindy Lauper. They are, okay, first of all, this was made the same year that he made Earth Girls Are Easy. So just like a fucking tremendous year for Jeff Goldblum. In the movie, they are both psychics, but they are different kinds of psychics. And the movie- Yeah, he's starts- a psychometrist, right? Yeah. So yeah. he can- he touches stuff and knows the history of an object. And then her psychicness comes from like a spirit guide, basically. <laughs> and the movie opens with like them at a paranormal studies testing center. And they're doing all these tests with the different psychics that are there and doing Zener cards and all this cute shit. And then it really devolves into madness and fucking Columbo's in it. Oh yeah. Um, A young Steve Buscemi is in it. <laughs> I knew you'd love it. Bro, it's like my new favorite movie. And they go, uh, barely anyone knows how the fuck it gets here, but they have to go on this adventure because basically somebody is looking for a fortune or a thing. Oh, it's hard to explain. I I don't want to ruin it. But anyway, they get paid to go find this thing because they're psychics and then just like madness ensues. So it's basically like a weird paranormal movie mixed with like an Indiana Jones type situation. And it is a delight. (laughs) But yeah, so in the movie, they she she calls him Banana Head. That's why I called you Banana Head <laughs> at the beginning. And listen, it's so funny. There's so many funny parts in it. I was genuinely cackling. I'm like, whoever wrote this is actually funny. When's the last time you watched it? Oh, probably 15 years ago. Oh my God. It's so good. She's doing her full Cindy Lauper voice. Oh, 100%. And she keeps calling him crazy words. She goes, what's up, Stretch? Stretcheroo. <laughs> and then he goes... He says something about how he calls his girlfriend Honey Muffin, and and he and she goes, "Oh, you can say Honey Muffin, and I can't call you Stretcheroo." I was like, I fucking cackled. <laughs> I'm like, this is my exact humor. <laughs> and her clothes and her makeup were so fucking cute. The whole They're movie. both they both look great in the film. I want to watch it every day. It was so good. So yeah, I watched Vibes. It's like $4 on Amazon. I need to buy it. I need a DVD, quite honestly. Or Blu-ray, whatever people are doing now. You need the limited special edition 4K. A, I, need a, I need a laser disc. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, and then another cute thing I wanted to tell you was I was watching an interview with um this silly thing that uh Mark Ruffalo and Emma Stone did where it was like, do they agree on the topic or do they disagree on the topic? So anyway, one of the topics was Friends is like an all-timer cozy show or something. And they both like said truth and then emma stone was like oh yeah i love friends and then and then eventually mark ruffalo goes i voted truth but i have never seen friends (laughs) he's like he's like too busy for such things but anyway it came out that yorgos lanthimos who made poor things and makes like the most artistic perfect movies ever is fucking obsessed with friends and i guess like during poor things filming like emma would bring up friends trivia on her phone and he would know every fucking answer so basically, me and Yorgos Lanthimos have to be best friends now. You can be best friends with him. I give up my role. Well, you can still ask me friends questions, too. <laughs> but I thought that was so funny. I'm like, he seems like so like on another planet. Like he wouldn't lower himself to watch friends, but I guess he loves it. Well, I was shocked this week because I'd never watched like terrestrial television because it's hard for me to watch terrestrial television because I don't have the antennas on my TVs and stuff. Lord. But I was flipping through, and it was late at night. I never watched Seth Meyer late night. Mm-hmm. And his guests were the hosts of Taskmaster. What the fuck? This week. They're like stalking you. Now, first they <laughs> were in Ghostbusters, and now they're on this, your <laughs> one random view Myers. It was very strange to run across. I was like, what is happening? Is it because like their clips keep going around the internet? Like, are they having like a moment? I think so. I think their new season is starting. And so maybe that's why it's going around. How many seasons have they had? 17. Yeah, this is really, they waited a long time for that. (laughs) That's cute. This is fucking annoying. I read yesterday that the new price point, listen, wait for it, you guys, you're going to be disgusted. The new price point at Dollar Tree is going to be between $125 and $7. (laughs) I'm sorry, that's a regular fucking store. Yeah. What are we doing? If I pick up something at Dollar Tree and it's $7, I will smash it on the ground and I will leave. (laughs) That is so rude. At the Dollar Tree over by us, they have two racks of shelvings that are $1 plus. And I've seen things on there for as much as $6. 
That's so dumb. What it's in your name, bro. It was already a joke when it was dollar and a quarter tree, but now it's not even seven dollars. It's like Walgreens. Why don't you just call yourself fucking Walgreens? Is it better for them to put an S after dollar and call themselves Dollars Tree or to add many before the dollar tree? So it's many dollar tree. I don't know. I don't know. They're gonna have to do something. Fucking soon it's gonna be ten tree. <laughs> tree, twenty tree. Just call it money tree. Seriously, money tree. That's whack as fuck. You're missing the point. I get, like, I whatever the fuck. Maybe the, I know they want to get different items in there, but it's like, bro. I remember when the penny candy place I used to went to went to a dime. Yeah, that's that's a lot. <laughs> as a little kid, that was a bummer for me. Yeah, that's a that's a big jump. I used to go in there and get ten pieces of candy for a dime, and then I go in there one day and I can get one piece of candy for a dime. Brutal. Yeah. So everything sucks basically <laughs> that's like not fair i don't like that at all also a weird thing that's happening i really want to mention this to see if anything if anybody else is experiencing this because i don't like it at all my i have an alexa thing it's a i think what are they i don't know what it is what your little assistant yeah i don't know if what it's called though is it what is it called a dot Ooh, i know it's not a dot i don't whatever the fucking thing is called you go hey alexa do this in my house anyway i have it set i don't like the regular alexa voice so i have it set to a british lady voice and in the last i would say week and a half every at night to like shut down my house i asked her to do like four things in a row like turn off the living room lights put on the fan in the bedroom whatever lately some of the answers are in a fucking disgusting little child's girl voice why is it doing that i don't have it set like that why is it doing that it's so fucking creepy it's doing it to scare you i don't like it i hate it and i need and i tried to search it on reddit see if it was happening to anybody else so let me, y'all have to let me know if your Alexa is answering in different voices, like a child. You can't even set it like that. I don't know why it's doing that. It's not even an option. <laughs> I fucking hate it. It's making me literally, I've been using the app on my phone to do the shit so I don't hear that voice out loud. Do you ever say thank you to your Always, voice? always. <laughs> it makes me feel like a dumbass, but I, I'm like it inherently polite. So I always do it. I lay in bed and I'll say, because uh, I have a, I have one of those Google ones. Mm -hmm. And so I'll go like, hey, Google, set an alarm for noon. And it'll go, your alarm is set for noon. And then I go, thank you. Well, every time. <laughs> I know. I'm like, who am I talking to? <laughs> every time. I'm such an idiot. Or like I have that, uh, the little Roomba type vacuum cleaner. Mm -hmm. And it'll get stuck. And I feel so bad for it when it's stuck. <laughs> You're like, let me help you out, little Roomba. I, I do. I go over there. I'm like, oh, buddy. And I, like, pick him up and move I'll do him. the same thing. <laughs> and my brother gave me one of those, and I still haven't used it. It's, like, sitting off to the side. I just feel like it would not even be able to operate over here because it's a land of fucking garbage floor. Dog toy land. Pretty true. I know. Do you have any anything else, or should we get into the voicemails? i just like to tell everybody that's listening that Jessica and I are both real people, and this podcast is not AI literally bro <laughs> there listen I, just when you think you've seen it all now i'm seeing shit about some podcasts acting like they have celebrities on their episodes and and, it, and it's not real it's ai voices and they're acting like they had big people as guests and it's not real it's wild out there it is wild listen just media literacy in fucking general if something looks like it's not, it just sounds too good to be true it probably is too good to be true like really think about no one's thinking about it. I've been sent in the last like week, not even kidding. People have sent me like 10 things that they think are real that aren't real. I'm like, I can't do this anymore. Why am I the only one that can tell that that shit's fake and no one can tell it's fake? I get it. Just, just so everybody knows. Yeah, literally we're real. Not going to superimpose people's fucking voices in the show. I did stumble. Uh, I got into a little conversation on Twitter with Rob uh, Christopherson. Mm -hmm. uh, just a little back and forth quickly because I thought you would find this interesting because you are the woman who for so long thought that cavemen and dinosaurs lived together. Listen, I've been meaning to re-bring that up, but go head on and then I'll go back to it. <laughs> go, go back to it. What do you want? No, I was, listen, I don't forget what sparked it, but I Googled something about the dinosaurs recently and it was like, it, and then I looked up a timeline and it's not even like, listen, when it came up the first time, I'm like, Okay, they were kind of close together. They were so inconceivably far apart. Yeah. That like like now that I see it's like hundreds of millions of years were in the middle and I thought it was like 
10 years. Uh, yeah, I thought it was like a hot 10,000 years or not <laughs> even. It, it's like inconceivably long. and It's like, every, a, it's like 65 to 100 million years. I apart. swear, when I re-saw it recently, I'm like, I am really fucking stupid. Look up. <laughs> like when you think of, like, who was the first president of the United States? Yeah, that was like five seconds ago. George Washington never knew what a dinosaur was because dinosaurs weren't discovered or named until about 60 years after he died. <laughs> Yeah, that, a life of not knowing that dinosaurs existed sounds terrible. But I'm saying like when people are like the founding fathers, they knew what they were doing when they wrote that they were the smartest guys around. None of the founding fathers. Dinosaurs weren't, the first dinosaur bones had been discovered, but people thought that they were the bones of giant human beings. Awesome. The guy who created the name dinosaur in relationship to like large old animals, it wasn't until like 1860. That's so crazy to think about. So like when people were writing the constitution, they had no idea that there were dinosaurs. Imagine what it would look like if they did. They would have rewritten the whole thing probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's funny when intelligence and no knowledge of the world that we live in radically changes so much because you will always hear people saying like they were the smartest people who lived they were the smartest people who like to craft the stuff even if you go back to like old philosophers galileo newton like all these people none of them knew about dinosaurs like every four-year-old on the planet right now knows about yeah. dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> Okay, should we do the voicemail? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, you guys, we're going to get into some voicemails, and we got some really good ones this time. Really um, diverse and interesting, weird, paranormal, true crime. We got a lot. We got pretty much something for everyone. Uh-oh, electronic voice phones. A lot electronic voicemails, phones, phenomenons. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this first one. Let it rip. Doing it. Hello, Tenny, Jessica, and Toad. My name is Cynthia, and I live in Compton, California. And I'm going to tell you about a spooky thing that happened to me when I started working at my mall business um, last year. So for sure, I know that my workplace is, uh, there's something there. So one of my coworkers, she had asked me to do an EVP session with her because she found out that I'm into the paranormal. So I was like, yeah, sure. We go to my boss's office, and uh, we started, you know, asking questions, and then what we got was a female, and I remember just feeling chills uh, all over my body. I was just like, oh, okay, someone's here. Um, so that night, I, I go home, go to sleep. In the middle of the night, I had a dream, and it really freaked me out because, like, this woman, I guess I saw her at the foot of my bed in my dream. She was wearing a black dress with a white collar. But I couldn't see her face. All I saw was her her arms. As she reached out to grab me, she grabbed my ankle, my right ankle, and my right wrist. And she proceeded to pull me out of my bed. And I could feel her nails dig into my right ankle. And that really freaked me out. So I just, I literally kicked the air. Like, I was like, holy shit. Like, what the fuck is going on? So I kicked the air and I could feel myself, like, kick kick the air <laughs> and then like I woke up like I woke up and I was too scared to look this person was still standing there at the foot of my bed so I covered myself the next day when I got to work I told my co-worker about my dream and she's like oh I forgot to mention that the spirits do follow you home and I was like great like well there you go like this person this woman followed me home so now like when I went to vote to work i was like okay whoever is here please do not follow me home like my home is my sacred space so go stay at work i'll come back to work anyway so you'll see me there just do not follow me home but i didn't say that out loud i just you know told them communicated this the spirit using my head but yeah like ever since then i will always come home from work tired and exhausted i'm not sure if they're actually using my energy to like you know manifest themselves or whatever but it's been like that for like a year now. And then I recently found out that I'm, a, that I'm an empath. And I'm like, well, great. Like, that makes sense. Like, as to why, like, I've been feeling really tired and like drained and I can feel other people's emotions too. And um, yeah, and then like, 
I've had a lot of paranormal experiences happen to me as well, but this is the one that really stood out to me the most. So yeah, uh, that's exactly what happened to me. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> it took longer than I thought it was gonna take, um, but I have one more comment to make. If Amy Bruni is listening to this podcast and if you guys can convince her to please, 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 please have a strange escape here in California or in Vegas, I don't care where, like, we miss you guys over here. It was fun when we went to the Queen Mary that one time in 2017. That was probably the best weekend my friends and I had with everybody paranormal like. It was so much fun. Please, please, please convince Amy Bruni to make a strange escape over here in California. Okay. Bye. 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 What do you think? Mm, I'm always interested. There really needs to be some research done into the fear of ankle grabbing. Yeah. Because, like, when you talk to little kids, no little kid wants to hang their feet over the side of the bed. It's true. One of the scariest parts in horror movies it was when something grabs somebody's ankle. The most, like, horrific body stuff is when someone cuts that back tendon on someone's leg. That's the worst. It's the worst. Like, what is that psychologically in us that when I hear that people's ankles are getting grabbed, like, it's some primal fear that's within us? I thought you were going to say... The, what is it called like like you wouldn't technically to most people that would sound like she had a nightmare but is that what she had count as what do they call it lucid dreaming like does that count as a seeing a ghost or is that a nightmare you know what i mean like i wonder if that yeah i mean it borders on sleep paralysis and old hag syndrome yeah but i mean at the same time too like she just had a ghosty experience so who knows what's going on but it's yeah. always good like I know that she said that she, in her mind, like went to the back to work and said, like, don't follow me home and stuff. There is something very, I mean, magically throughout the history of magic. There's a reason we talk about magic words. And yes, you can think things and your mind is very powerful, but there is also something about speaking them aloud that imbibes them with a little more power. So I always always suggest, like, I do it at my house to keep my house safe. When I go in my house, every time I walk into my house and I go, this is my house, and I just say it out loud to myself mm -hmm. so that it can be heard and I can hear it too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I would agree with you. It does kind of feel stupid sometimes because you're like, who the fuck am I talking to? But A, I do agree. And then I would say that also I would use that same rule for like manifesting and like wishing nice stuff for yourself. It's it's one thing to say it in your head, but once you say it out loud, it really does have like a, a new power. Yes. And uh, I'll talk to Bruni. Yeah, I'll send her the flip. All right, next message. Hello, this is Krista from Oregon, and bless your heart very much. I left a message that uh, could not be understood, and I got a really lovely text message saying, hey, call back, and it took me like a week and a half to call back. Um, hopefully, the audio is better on this message. Ultimately, I have had a really super rough week with multiple signs of that it was going to be a rough week, that things were coming to fruition that I, in a way that I thought that they would. But the main theme of my message was just that when I listen to your podcast, uh, I'm really inspired by your friendship and your love for each other. And in my really rough week, without me telling anybody that I had a really rough week, I just had this message from the universe or whatever uh, show up over and over again about how rich and intimate and deep and supportive and silly friendship could be. And listening to your podcast is one of those instances of like, it's just really lovely. So... The big picture theme of my previous mm -hmm. message, which I'm reiterating, is thank you so much for just being your authentic self, and your friendship is really beautiful, and I am I love listening to you. I'm so grateful to you both. Okay, bye. Aww. Yuck. I know we hate each other. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> We're not hearing what you're hearing. No, it's kidding. <laughs> It's not coming through on our end. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that someone thinks that we like each other. Oh. Good work, buddy. Good work, buddy. Thanks for being my friend. Thanks for being my friend, I guess. All right, next message. 
Hi, my name is Krista S., and I feel like I need to talk really fast like the Micro Machine fast talker guy from the commercials in the 80s. I'm a courtroom clerk. I live in California. I've worked in the criminal division for a very long time. Part of my duties include handling exhibits from murder trials sometimes. I was working on one where it was from a trial in the early 80s uh, where this hitman from the Aryan Brotherhood it was a double homicide, and... He died in prison a couple of years ago, and I was working on the exhibits, and I had this urge to listen to music from that time period, and that day, I was cataloging exhibits from his personal property, his wallet, the things that were in his wallet, his car, the things that were in his car, and I felt like I was being watched, and then I looked over, and he was the an apparition of him was standing in the doorway, staring at me, and then I looked again, and he was gone. It was really scary, and the exhibit locker is in this, like, dank corner of the building, so I was definitely by myself. It wasn't someone else that just looked like him, or I, there was no footsteps. I just saw him, like, standing in the doorway, staring at me, and then he was gone. It was just kind of weird, and yeah. So, um, also, I used to live in a haunted house. And when I moved in, the roommates didn't tell me that it was haunted. And I woke up one night, and I looked up, and there was an apparition, a full-bodied apparition of a little old man with crazy hair and glasses staring down at me. And closed my eyes because I was a little freaked out. And then I opened them, and it was gone. And I went to talk to the roommates, like, the next day. And I was like, uh, hey, you guys, there was a ghost in my room last night staring at me. It was a little old man with glasses. And they were like, oh, yeah, we didn't tell you. This place is haunted. We nicknamed him Mortimer. The ghost, they nicknamed him Mortimer. And they were like, yeah, we didn't tell you. Like, okay, well, I saw Mortimer last night. And they were like, yeah, we thought you might be freaked out and not move in. Like, okay. And they were like, we've never actually seen him, but he does stuff like turn the water on and we go watch sometimes. So that was like another ghost story. Anyway, I love you guys. And bye. Bye. That was a crazy one. Mortimer. Mortimer. I wrote a poem about a guy named Mortimer once. Oh, yeah. Why? Because the name Mortimer is really funny to me. <laughs> really funny. I know. I, I like how it went from like the scariest story I've ever heard about an evidence locker and seeing the criminal's ghost. And then it was like Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the paranormal works. I know. Spooky silly. That is so fucking scary, though yeah for sure as soon as listen as soon as she was like hi i work in criminal justice in california i'm like oh fuck yeah give me this story i'm this is gonna be great <laughs> okay. Enjoy it. i was hooked that was a good call thank you so much p.s the whole time we've been talking there's like these two robins outside my window and their bellies are so bright red and they are making me so happy they are filled with eggs i know i think they're that's the thing i think they're building a nest in my front tree and i'm so happy anyway Next call. Hello, weirdos. This is BJ from Pennsylvania. I have found myself in Kentucky, a very near Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So I took a field trip to the Mothman Festival. Uh, I know at the time that I am calling, this is a, a, a good chunk of time after the Mothman Festival, but I just got to call. When we were at the Mothman Festival, we saw Mark May's robot, who is fantastic and his art is really good. And I bought a ornament from his young son that had the vegetable man on it. And I I don't know jack shit about the vegetable man, and I could Google it, but why would I Google it when I could call and hopefully have Teddy talk about it? That would be great. I hope to hear it on the next mailbag. Thanks. Bye. Love it. Am I supposed to talk about vegetable man now? I guess. I don't really know that much about Vegetable Man. Okay, well, good, because I looked up a little thing and I wanted to read it. So, Vegetable Man was, it's like a cryptid. Mm -hmm. Some say it was a hoax. Gray Barker wrote about it in his newsletter from a sighting that somebody had, allegedly. Who knows if that sighting was real or if this person was real. Nobody knows. But um, the best part of the thing that I read was this guy Jennings Frederick is apparently the person who saw Vegetable Man in 1968. So it says, on a beautiful mid-July day, in 1968, Jennings Frederick was walking through the woods during an unsuccessful hunt for a woodchuck. I think I do know this story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right there, it was like, isn't every walk through the woods just like a chance? Like, really, the whole purpose is to try and see a woodchuck for sure. For sure. For sure. Does Vegetable Man have a big nose? Yeah, he's like a big, tall. He looks like a like a celery. Yeah, I think I know that case now. <laughs> <laughs> 
so yeah so the guy says that he was walking through the woods and he thought he got like snagged on a plant but it was a vegetable man and it like put its arms around him and it had suction cup fingers and he thought it was drawing his blood and i guess it made some kind of weird noise or recording and it said you need not fear me i wish to communicate i come as friends we know you all i come in peace i wish medical assistance i need your help and then i think he just ran away <laughs> but um the diagrams and the drawings of vegetable man are real cute so when you said you got a christmas ornament of vegetable man i got real jealous real jealous did you ever hear the song vegetable man by who oh god are you gonna sing spoon man right now no no i'm actually not surprisingly <laughs> for once in my life <laughs> No, Vegetable Man was a song by Pink Floyd, like one of their early, early songs. And then it was covered oh. later on by Jesus and Mary Chain. No. Well, there you go. You know what else came from me just doing eight seconds of research was I didn't know Gray Barker was 6'4". Yep, big guy. Bro, that is crazy to me. Can I tell you the lyrics to Vegetable Man? Oh, we always have time for that, sure. In yellow shoes, I get the blues. Though I walk the street with plastic feet, my blue velvet trousers make me feel pink. There's a kind of stink about my trousers. In a paisley oh. shirt, I look like a jerk. And my turquoise waistcoat is quite out of sight. And my haircut looks bad. Vegetable Man, where are you? <laughs> is, that about, is that about the same thing? No. Oh, it sounds like it's about Mortimer again. <laughs> I think Sid Barrett from Pink Floyd was just on a lot of drugs. Perfect. Next message. Hey, Lucod. This is Jack from Arizona. I love the podcast. I listen to the whole catalog. I just listened to an episode where you talked about uh, premonitory dreams, and I just wanted to share one of mine with you when... I was a kid. I woke up at a terrible night terror. I was inconsolable, like nothing my parents did would calm me down. And all I kept saying was, Grandpa fell, Grandpa fell, he's not okay. So in the middle of the night, my mom called my grandparents, woke them up so I could talk to my grandpa to show that everything was okay. And after that, I was fine. I went to bed, never thought about it again. Well, not even... Two weeks later, they were at a small town, like, park festival, and my grandpa fell. He ended up having a brain aneurysm, and he passed away, and uh, it's been 30 years, and it's just something that I've never been able to get over. Anyways, I think that's my first time sharing that story with people I know who are going to believe me and take me seriously, so... Thank you for everything and all that you do. Bye. We definitely believe you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that story. The thing that has always interested me back in old timey paranormal research back in the 1800s, the books that we usually talk about that are kind of seminal works in parapsychology and paranormal phenomena, I always talk about Phantasms of the Living, which is a collection of people seeing ghosts. The thing that gets missed is that usually it's crisis apparitions and people see the ghost of a person before the person has died in most cases yeah so then what is it is it their astral body knowing the future and going and saying goodbye is it a ghost in the future like that's how wonky it was but people just kind of wrote it off as like oh it's ghosts is your psychology picking it up like again is it premonitory that your brain is reaching into the future or is their brain reaching out from the future to the past it's real fucking wonky yeah like is it maybe when you're almost dead like you're you're closer to a point where you can just separate from your body and then go like get ready for the things right or does your body know that something's going to happen so it sends you on a mission before it doesn't yeah. have the chance anymore yeah that's like your um orientation yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy it's crazy but thanks for sharing that story yeah next message what up space dunk <laughs> is <laughs> on the internet a couple of episodes ago, y'all were talking about the new Jesse Eisenberg Sasquatch movie, Sasquatch Sunset, that's going to come out. And uh, I remember you were asking about, have there been many dramatic Sasquatch movies? And I wanted to call and talk about a movie from 2011 called Letters from the Big Man. It's by uh, Christopher Munch, who's a filmmaker who makes 
uh, very strange and thought-provoking films. He actually worked with Bryce Johnson in the early 2000s, which is pretty interesting. It stars Lily Rabe from American Horror Story, and also Karen Black, the legendary actress Karen Black, has a cameo in it. It is a beautiful movie. I have it on DVD. It is very patient and slow and serene, and it takes a very mature look at um, a human's relationship with a Sasquatch. And Munch had a lot of trouble getting funding at the time because everyone wanted a either a, a horror or a comedy, as you all know, and they just did not comprehend the concept of a peaceful Sasquatch movie, but Christopher Munch really wanted to make that a reality. So he financed the film himself, and it turns out to be this beautiful little low-budget feature that he also ended up having to distribute himself. After the movie, Munch created a YouTube channel called Fir and Cedar, like the trees, F-I-R and Cedar, where he hosted he hosted a show called Speaking of Sasquatch, where he interviewed several different experts and just got their perspectives on the interdimensional and spiritual nature of the phenomenon. Um, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's just very peaceful and serene, and um, I hope this was informative. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. Yay, Swan. Yay, we'll watch. We'll watch. I know it's already on my watch list. I just haven't gotten to it yet. First of all, Swan, love you forever. One of my favorite people on the interwebs. Firstly, I love, love that you described the movie as patient. That was so sweet to me. Like, as someone who's like obsessed with slow burn horror movies, like slow burn sounds like an insult to me. It's, it sounds negative. But if you changed it and said patient, like, I love that. Like, I'm literally going to use that now. Oh, but anyway, so Swan had left two voicemails and the other one, the audio quality was just like not good enough to play on here, sadly. But the two topics that were brought up were Yosemite, how they had a UFO experience there and how Yosemite is magical, which it is best place ever. (laughs) Honestly, can't wait to go back. And then the second thing was Swan had said that they had recently gotten into like old slashers and they had watched like Friday the 13th and um. Nightmare on Elm Street movies, and they wanted some slasher wrecks, so I'm ready. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Okay, some good ones are that I personally... And let us let me preface this by saying this does not mean they're fucking good movies. It just means they're <laughs> iconic. <laughs> it just means they're iconic and fun and ridiculous. A low-key banger that not a lot of people talk about is Prom Night 2 from 1987. Hello, Mary Lou. It's Prom great. Night. So good. So good. Nobody ever talks about that movie. That movie's fucking crazy. So yeah, Prom Night 2. You don't have to have seen Prom Night 1 by any means. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cutting Class from 89, which I think greatly influenced uh, Thanksgiving, Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it was one of Brad Pitt's first movies. My Bloody Valentine, 1981. My Bloody Valentine, the first one, is genius. Yeah, terrifying. It's great. Yeah. New Year's Evil, 1980. And then... I'll, I'm ending with my two who I think uh, throughout the course of slashers and horror movies in general, I think these last two have the most scary, like make you feel nauseous, scary killers in the movie. Like something about their face and the mannerisms and how they talk is literally disgusting and makes it so fucking scary. So the first one, obviously, Slumber Party Massacre, 1982. Great. Fantastic. So fucking scary. That guy is so scary. Last one, you'll agree with this too. Blood Feast, 1963. Oh, it's great. That guy is so scary. It's great. So there's your list, Swan. Do I have any slasher wrecks? Let's have it. I would go with uh, 1979's Driller Killer. Nice. Uh, I love the ending is great. No spoilers. And then there is a late 60s british film with boris karloff and i think it's called the sorcerers and just the setup for it i'll give you a a husband and a wife the husband's played by boris karloff they invent a hypnotic machine so that they can feel what other people are doing Mm. and him and his wife accidentally connect themselves to the mind of a killer so like they're washing their hands because they think they have blood all over their hands and they can feel him like the wife is like making dinner and then like all of a sudden realizes she's stabbing a woman 
So the sorcerers and driller killer. I feel like somebody needs to. How old is it? Sixties. Sixty-seven. I feel like somebody should remake that movie. It was made by the same guy who made uh, Witchfinder General, the Vincent Price Witchfinder movie, which is great. And that is a very sad story. The man who made that, his name was Michael Reeves, and he did not make it to 30. Dang. It's a very sad story. He directed Witchfinder General, The Sorcerers, and I think two other movies by the time he was 25. Just to make everybody feel like a piece of shit. To make everybody feel better, uh, Peter Cushing didn't make his first horror movie until he was 45 years old. There we go. How's that? There we go. <laughs> and then he made and then he made 51 of them. <laughs> Dang. People are like, Peter Cushing always looked the same. It's like, yeah, because when he started making films, he was 45 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. All right. All the wrecks. All the work for every, all the homework for everybody. Also, one of the reasons that people might like Sorcerers, since Michael Reeves, the director, was young when he made it in 67, he filmed most of it in, like, Chelsea, in downtown Chelsea, in England, like, psychedelic england 1967 from the viewpoint of like a 23 year old it's an amazing glimpse into that go-go lifestyle cute i love when horror movies have like happy stuff or bright stuff and then like fucked up stuff it's yes it's, for sure that juxtaposition is always so good yes loves it okay next message hi this is kathy from kansas i'm calling again because the call last time got cut off. I'm going to try and tell you my ghost story. It gets cut off again, then I guess it was meant not to be. But anyway, um, my story is about a haunted hotel. My husband and I went to Excelsior Springs, Missouri uh, for my birthday a couple years ago. Um, There's this awesome old hotel called The Elms, and it's on Hot Springs, and it's super old and apparently super haunted. And we went for a couple of nights, did some ghost hunting they encourage you to do amateur ghost hunting we checked out the ballroom it was kind of spooky a little bit of weird stuff nothing major nothing that you couldn't kind of explain away happened um but the one weird thing that i always think about and remember was it was october so it was a little bit chilly not too cold but i had made sure to pack a sweater because um we were only staying for two nights and i was like one sweater should be fine so I remember specifically taking out the sweater, it was a blue card again, put it in my bag. I have like a visual memory of putting it in my bag. And when I got to the hotel and went to get the sweater, because it was getting later, it was a little chilly, the sweater was gone. No sweater. And I was very irritated because I specifically remember packing the sweater. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, where did the sweater go? Um, searched all over, took the whole bag apart, no sweater. Very annoyed, didn't have long sleeves the entire trip, a little chilly, kind of sucked. And then when we went to go home, um, obviously repacked the bag, checked the entire room, still no sweater. So I get home and went to unpack my bag. And when I unzipped it, literally like a wrapped present, that sweater was draped over the entire contents of the suitcase as if like... Someone was, you know, wrapping all of my clothes in that sweater. And it was really fucking freaky. And um, I have absolutely no way of explaining that unless my husband was fucking with me, which he's not quite that type, so I doubt it. Um, but, yeah, it was really weird. And I'm wondering maybe is my sweater haunted? Anyway, what do you think? Thanks. Love the pod. Bye. Bye. I love it. I have no idea if your sweater's haunted. I know. Hashtag haunted sweater. Hashtag organized ghosts. <laughs> it's you as a ghost <laughs> you're like you know what i'm gonna do in my afterlife pack twice you know what i'm gonna do in my afterlife i'm gonna make sure everybody's packed up properly that's right that is my job as a ghost <laughs> <laughs> and they get they get home and all their shit's ironed and they're like who ironed all this and i'm just my ghost is just smiling near the ceiling with a can of ghost spray starch boom ghost starch all right next message Hey, weirdos. It's Ashley calling from Ontario. I wanted to call in and say um, how much I appreciate you both. I have been listening to the pod again from the beginning, and it's really been helping me get through all of the mental shit that's come with post-cancer treatment and life just fucking right now. But uh, when you guys gave me a shout out on the pod last year, Kenny closed off with the words, swirl the magic. 
And um, that's really stuck with me because there have been so many synchronicities during this time in my life. One being my nanny volunteered for an organization that donates quilts to cancer patients. Um, when she heard about my diagnosis, she called the woman who keeps the quilts and asked her to bring her some so she could pick one for me. The lady brought her a couple, and one of them just so happened to be a quilt that my nanny made. So naturally, she gave that to me, and we were both really blown away by that because you don't. You know, this lady had no way of knowing that it was one that my grandmother made. They're all sealed in bags. You have no way of knowing who they're made by. During this time, uh, I also had an experience with omens. Um, sadly, my nanny was diagnosed with cancer at the same time I was. About a week after I got out of the hospital, I was using the bathroom in the middle of the night when I heard three soft knocks on the door. I thought it was my kids, so I was like, oh, I'll be done in a second, and of course, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I swear to fucking God, if I open this door, and there's nobody in the hallway, I'm going to shit my pants, and sure enough, opens the door, none of my kids are in the hall, and I go into their rooms, and I check on them, like, touch them in bed, and they're, like, sound asleep. So I grabbed my tarot deck and I sat down on my bed and I said, okay, well, clearly you've got something to say. So, like, what's the message here? And the card that I pulled was a, uh, a heart with a snake wrapped around it and a dagger going through it. And it was talking about how the card was about how my family would reunite over a loss. And sure enough, my nanny would... Uh, pass away from cancer like a week after that happened yeah so yeah so I've been taking this time to really embrace the magic side of me and in my life and I want to commemorate that and I would love to have you and Kenny both write out swirl the magic for me so that at some point in the near future I can go and get that tattooed on me because that has really meant a lot to me um, and hopefully I don't regret it because I have no idea what y'all's handwriting looks like. Um, anyway, I, that's it. I'm not going to make it any longer. I love you, weirdos. Okay, bye. <laughs> that's very nice. Jessica's handwriting is terrible. It is not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but that's very cute. And I'm sure DM me if you, if you are the person who left that and we'll, I was thinking like you could write one of the words and I'll write the other one. Yeah. Yeah, and then I just we'll... I just saw my word weirdo tattooed on someone at the Potographs event. So cute. Everybody's out there doing the magic. Yeah. Doing the hard work. Yeah. All right. Last voicemail of the episode. Let's go. Hi, uh, it's Emily, your local Seattle tour guide again. Hopefully everyone isn't tired of hearing me ramble. But uh, so I just had to I had to call in because and this was a week ago at this point. Essentially this is a weird, I don't, I never know where to start with a story. So essentially, uh, I, I always start my tours by telling people that if they have their own ghost stories, they should tell me. And my tour in Seattle is more ghost heavy than true crime heavy, but you really can't do a tour in Seattle without touching on true crime, just because, I mean, Seattle is unfortunately, it's a, it's a, serial killer heavy area, as odd as that is to say. Um, and part of the reason that we got into this conversation is because one of the girls that is also a tour guide with me grew up next to, like, literally, like, right next door to Gary Ridgeway, who is the Green River Killer. Like, he used to drive her to school. And I actually run into people pretty frequently on the tours who knew him or who uh, had seen him around or who were waitresses who used to work at bars that he frequented. So we, I mean, it's, it's kind of unavoidable because people always ask about him. And the other person that everybody always asks about is obviously Ted Bundy because Ted Bundy grew up in Washington. And my roommate in college, her mother also grew up in the same area that Ted Bundy was sort of roaming around in. And when, she, when her mother was a teenager, um, her and a friend of hers were at the beach and a guy asked them if they wanted to ride home and they ended up getting in this guy's car and you know halfway through the ride they got such a bad vibe off this guy 
that they ended up bailing out of his car sort of on the on the road, like basically like down on the highway, but on a on a major road because they just realized they shouldn't be in this guy's car. Um, several years later, realized that it was Ted Bundy that they had been in Ted Bundy's car. So those are just sort of things that I touch on, and I'm talking about all of this last weekend during my tour. And one of my guests pulls me aside and tells me that he doesn't have any ghost stories of his own, but that he had gone on a blind date with Andrew Cunanan a year before the guy killed Versace, which is just crazy. And basically what he told me is that he went out for burritos with this guy and Andrew didn't have any money and he kept searching all of his clothes for money and it was like really embarrassing. And, uh, you know, this guy that presented himself like he had money and then he was just like really neurotic and twitchy the entire time. And he ended up like, never talking to him again and didn't think about him until he ended up on the news for killing Versace, which is just crazy. So I, it's weird to grill your tour guests about like personal, like, like when you go on a blind date with someone, but that is probably the most unhinged thing anyone has ever told me um, outside of ghost stories. I mean, it's just, I, I just, how do you end up on a date? Well, although it happens to people all the time, I suppose, you know, you never know who you're going to date, I guess. And this had to have been in the 90s. Um, he wasn't he wasn't an older guy, but he was definitely old enough to have been dating in the 90s. So that is something. So I don't know. I, I want to say that Seattle isn't actually a serial killer heavy place, but I keep running into people who have run into serial killers here, and I never did that in Ohio. Maybe I did. I don't know. Anyway, that's it. That's my story from last weekend. Uh, you guys are great. I love you all. And I will probably talk to you again soon because at this point I feel like I'm a freaking flyer. So hopefully everybody's not tired of hearing me ramble by now. Anyway, you guys are the best. Love you. Bye. 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 I think that unfortunately, like a lot of people have probably dated someone who murdered someone and we just don't know about it i know i always think that shit especially from watching this stuff all the time that like the amount you know about is just like gotta be it's fucking three to two percent of all the serial yeah. killers out there it's just uh, it's better that we don't know probably i mean i don't know i yeah i mean i personally there was one time i met this woman and we had a chit chat like in a store when we met mm -hmm. and then like coincidentally re-met again at the bar like two weeks later exchanged mm -hmm. phone numbers and then like she invited me on a date so i went to her apartment to pick her up and walked in her apartment and i was like oh like she's a murderer what like i walked into her place and the vibe was so fucking bad and she was so not the person i had talked to like like there was a lot of like no 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 just we're, we're not gonna go out you're gonna stay here like you didn't tell anybody that you came right like no i was just like oh i got it i'm leaving right now oh and there was that weird like my like i don't know how to say this properly my olfactory my smelling sensation uh -huh. was telling me that there was danger in the house like there was body parts there something that's fucked up and i i didn't even like i mean I, I i don't think the door ever closed behind me from going into her apartment like i walked in the door was open and she was immediately just like in this different place and her surrounding and everything in there and all of my senses were just like alarm bells and I left and I, I remember walking back to my car and she was following me, like talking to me, like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? And I remember like driving home. That was the last time I ever saw her. Like I never saw her around. I know. And then I started thinking like, did she accidentally meet me at that store? And then it wasn't an accident because then two weeks later, she's at the bar that I go to. Like, I was like, oh, this is all. So I think it happens a lot more than we probably know. That's how I was already thinking when you said that, like, oh, and then you ran into her again. I'm like, no, you fucking didn't. Yeah, no, I didn't. That was, <laughs> that was a setup. Yes. And you never, did you ever know her first and last name? Did you ever Google her since that? Or did you just know her first name? I knew her first name and the last name she went by, but that wasn't her real name. Of course it wasn't. 
so there was no real way for me to track her down i don't understand how we've talked for like 700 minutes on on record not 700 700 hours on record and you've been my friend forever and i'm obsessed with serial killers and you never told me the date fucking woman serial killer story it's only something probably that i've really come to terms with because maybe a year ago i don't remember when it was that i was cleaning off my family's graves and i had to walk home but i had to walk past her apartment building oh. and i think it was a year ago and the apartment building is condemned now and closed down so like i think there's a part of me that feels safe talking about it because like the space of her doesn't even exist anymore mm -hmm. but who knows what the fuck? well thanks everybody for calling in with your calls <laughs> that one ended sketchy <laughs> <laughs> i'm like shooketh i want to know i need to know everything i want to know where it, you're gonna tell me where i might I, I might tell you later off of off. yeah you, yes yeah. yes yeah. okay good talk well thanks for calling everybody yeah if you guys i don't even remember the fucking phone number right now <laughs> <laughs> uh if you guys want to be on a future evps episode the number is three one three four 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 five one seven zero you know, we don't do these that often. I really let them accumulate. And I will say it again, as I have in the past, if the audio quality sucks or if it's just like, you know, not that interesting, I'm going to delete it. <laughs> oh, you can play the lottery with that. See if you make it. See if you don't. Oh, also shout out to our listener, Matt, with one T. Hope you're doing good. Hope you got a new apartment. Hope everything's great. Shout out to everybody's dogs and cats and hamsters and birds and whoever you got in your house that is a friend. You got any shout outs? Uh, I don't think so. Well, we'll be back whenever we're back. Sometimes we're back soon. Sometimes we take two weeks off without notice. All right. Uh, get your tickets to win a date with Jessica. Cool. Uh, buy some Old Town Roasting. Do -do 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 -do. And that's it. All right. We love you guys. Let's Missy maybe see some of you in Toledo pretty soon. At Midwest Parafest. Woo! Woo! Okay, bye. 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 Boop.